But for now, it's time for our prestigious annual achievement awards. The master of ceremonies for the award is Mr. Robert Levin. But before he comes to the stage, let me tell you a little bit about the man who conceived and established the GBA's annual achievement awards. Robert Levin is a technology pioneer of the World Economic Forum in Artificial Intelligence and Tech a Laureate by the Tech Museum of Innovation. He is a futurist, inventor, tech investor, fund manager, and visionary of mega trends in AI, the blockchain, cybersecurity, and digital transformation of nations. Robert Levin is the chairman of the Government Blockchain Foundation and the author of the first best-selling book biography on Bill Clinton. The Annual Achievement Awards was conceived by Robert Levin in 2019 and were inaugura inaugurated in the United States Capitol. We were at the uh, Capitol Congressional Auditorium in January 2020. So please help me welcome Mr. Robert Levin to host the GBA Annual Achievement Awards. see you again. It's a pleasure to be here. So good afternoon, everybody. So it's my great pleasure to be here as we celebrate the annual achievement awards of the Government Blockchain Association. I want to extend a warm welcome to all of our guests, including past finalists, uh, current finalists, and past awardees, and distinguished guests in the blockchain industry. Do you have water? Thanks. So our mission of the Government Blockchain Association is to promote the adoption of blockchain technology by governments, businesses, and individuals. As you know, blockchain and technology has evolved into a very significant industry with potential for social impact, on the, social, on the sustainable development goals. Some of the largest investments in the blockchain space have been made in various sectors, including finance, supply chain, healthcare, and energy. These investments aim to leverage blockchain's decentralized and transparent nature to drive efficiency, security, and trust in these industries. The future of blockchain applications holds tremendous potential. All of you represent that potential in this room. In healthcare, for example, blockchain can enhance data security, interoperability, patient privacy. The social impact of blockchain on SDGs also is significant. It can promote accountability, address corruption, and ensure fair distribution of resources, and contribute to many of the SDGs. Overall, Blockchain technology has the potential to revolutionize various sectors, promote efficiency, transparency, and inclusivity. While regulatory challenges still exist, the acceleration of blockchain is, uh, is gaining momentum. Over $65 billion has been invested in the last six years in blockchain infrastructure. So today, we um, take great pleasure in the nominations of people who have worked very hard on all of these significant challenges. So the first award that uh, we're going to be presenting by Bill Rockwood is leadership, which, as you know, can comprises many, many different skills, including leading a group of people, but also motivating them, giving them direction, giving them a vision, giving them a mission, and helping to navigate uncertain waters. The award recognizes members of our association who demonstrate leadership within their team that's impactful, effective, motivational, and consistent, but also visionary and courageous. So it incorporates a lot of different elements. The second award category is innovation. Pretty obvious, most of you are innovators, but it's turning not only an idea into a service or product, it's also thinking outside the box and learning about advanced technologies and integrating them and tacking them on in a way that is creative and frankly, possibly uh, breaking new ground in innovation that could be new intellectual property 
and possibly integrating third party intellectual property in a novel way. So innovative solutions have been around for a long time, but it's rare that you see that they solve a real world problem. And that's one of our criteria. The third award category is for social impact. As you know, it's an area that affects all citizens and all people. And there's so many problems facing us in so many domains that we need to keep in mind that technology actually can benefit humanity, not just uh, demonstrate the ability to do something faster, cheaper, better, but also change people's lives for the better. So we want to select awardees that have an impact on the well-being of a community, a society, or the world at large, but also improve conditions around them. So it's similar to the concept of social good, but the change is much more dramatic. So social impact must stand for a significant change in the best practices and achieve the maximum benefit to, the, to society or a culture. The fourth award is for courage. And we know that there's many instances of courage in the political world and the military world, but it's also true in the technology world. And uh, I congratulate my friend Gerard for being courageous to start this organization with a vision when blockchain was still in its infancy and many other people have joined him. And I think that the courage is partly overcoming fear, but it's also having the courage of one's convictions. So we were looking for awardees and Kathy Dache, who's the curator of this event, selected judges who I believe exemplify all of these qualities and have, uh, I think, the kind of perspective on the industry to select the best finalist and we hope the best awardees. So this year we're adding one new award to the Annual Achievement Awards. It's called the Organizational Excellence Award. Water? Yeah, just water. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So since 2023 now, is the first year that we are presenting the Organizational Excellence Award, GBA, led by Gerard Dache, has taken the opportunity to choose the winner, and it was an obvious choice. Uh, the final award is for not only excellence to advance blockchain, but you'll be delighted to know that it'll have an impact on people in 192 nations around the world. So I'd now like to introduce the judges for the award selection committee, curated again by Kathy Dache. It's my pleasure to tell you about this committee of award selection judges. Andrew Gillick is a digital asset and blockchain investment researcher and writer based in New Zealand. He flew all the way here and is also the GBA economic analysis working lead. He's a master at transforming data into information and information into insights. Brian Nielsen, who introduced me as the executive director of the Blockchain Academy, the host of the globally acclaimed Blockchain 360 podcast and a distinguished international and influential persuasive speaker. He's also a member of the GBA Board of Directors. Eric Guthrie is the GBA Director of Education and a published author and an international speaker on blockchain and related topics. His latest book, Blockchain or Die, has been distributed globally. Another judge is Luisa Marshall, Marcel, who's from Barcelona, Spain, and is the technological innovation leader and international action lead for the government of Catalonia Institute for Energy. And Marky Allen has been appointed by the District of Columbia Financial Services, um, Regulatory Sandbox and Innovation Council under Mayor Muriel Bowser of Washington, D.C. He also leads the GBA Healthcare Working Group. There's now over 50 working groups in the GBA. Shauna Hoffman Childress is the chair of the U.S. Commodities Trading Commission, Distributed Ledger and Market Infrastructure Subcommittee. So please join me for an applause for our judges for the 2023 Annual Achievement Awards of the Government Blockchain Association, <laughs> including Kathy Dache, our Creative Events Director who organized and curated this important event. The presenters who will present the finalists in the next few minutes include 
um, the following names. Our finalists um, have volunteered to present these awards. Uh, they were all awardees in the past. Each will have five minutes to announce all finalists, open the box with the, uh, the award announcement, and then give the announcement and present the award. So our first presenters for the Leadership Award will be Bill Rockwood, the winner of the 2022 um, GBA Annual Achievement at Leadership Award. That was a pretty good speech he gave. I loved it. The Innovation Award presenter is Frank Ricotta, the 2020 winner of the GBA Annual Achievement Innovation Award. The Social Impact Award presenter is Kathleen Alcorn, the 2022 winner of the GBA Annual Achievement Social Impact Award. And the Courage Award presenter is, is it true that it's Ambassador Marco Kova or you? You, it'll be someone else, okay. And so she was uh, nominated, but she couldn't show up. So the organizational excellence presenter instead will be Bill Rockwood, is that correct? All right, that's terrific. So please join me in a warm round of applause for our presenters for each annual achievement award. Chat GBT just wrote this speech 15 minutes ago. That's why it's hard, hard to read it. <laughs> it's now my honor to introduce the first presenter of the Leadership Award, my friend Bill Rockwood. <laughs> Kathy? Oh, Kathy, Kathy Dashe will present on behalf of uh, Bill Rockwood. Hello. Thanks, everybody, for being here to the Annual Achievement Awards. We are so excited that all of you are here. Thank you, and I'm not Bill Rockwood. But I do get the great privilege today to announce the uh, finalists for the Leadership Award. And I want you to know that these three finalists were chosen out of dozens of exceptional people. So becoming a finalist in the Annual Achievement Awards is a great achievement already. So all of our finalists are actually winners themselves. So the three finalists for the uh, Leadership Award for 2023, they are, slides working. All right, keep going. The three finalists are Cynthia Loomis, United States Senator from Wyoming, Carol House, the Executive in Residence at Terranet Ventures, and Sari Kassam the Middle East lead for GBA and general manager to iBlockchain. And the winner for the 2023 Annual Achievement Awards for Leadership is Sari Kassam. Well, um, I'm grateful um, and honored uh, and uh, unexpected. So, um, I, I thought uh, Cynthia is going to take this award. She's a senator, and <laughs> but uh, that's, that shows how like GPA is working. It's 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 a transparent uh, uh, award, and uh, and uh, I'm really thankful for uh, for being here with the team of GPA through all the hard working, all the years, and. Um, like uh, what I can remember now is uh, the Lincoln Memorial, where I visit first time in DC. Um, in uh, it's my first time, of course. So, uh, so I read what he said in, in that uh, that place. That uh, this government is for people and by people. And what is it? Out of the people, by the people, for the people. So that's that's exactly what what it was all in the United Nations, in the United States. This nation is a great nation, and uh, it will be always like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay here for one second. 
I, I just want to say one thing about about Sari. So Sari uh, joined us. I'm not sure how long ago it four was. Years. About four years ago, and um, we had nothing going on in the Middle East. And this guy, um, all on his own on his own time, basically went all around the Middle East, interviewing people, talking to people about GBA, working through all kinds of problems, dealing with uh, government leaders, and he's just been an incredible asset to the community. I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. No, can we do it? Okay, I'll let you be the sasher. <laughs> All right, so that's another thing. Oh, okay, so. Oh, I feel I'm graduated again. There you go. Thank you. That's lovely. That's, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. They're brave giving me glass. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Frank Ricotta. I'm the CEO of, and founder of Burst IQ. Um, you know, it was an honor and privilege to receive this award back in 2020, you know, right before all the fun COVID stuff. And it was at the US Capitol and it was an amazing backdrop. And so today we're here to celebrate our next, um, our next nomin uh, nominees for this, in my view, very prestigious award. But they gave me a few minutes so I could talk for a few minutes. Um, and so before we just jump into the award, I think it's essential to reflect on what it truly means to be an innovator. Because an innovator is not merely a buzzword or trendy concept. It represents the embodiment of human cre creativity and I think in many ways human spirit. See, an innovator is someone who dares to challenge the status quo, who sees possibilities where others see limitations. They possess a unique ability to think beyond the boundaries of convention and imagine a world that is yet to exist. See, innovators are the architects of change. They disrupt conventions and reshape the very fabric of our society. But being an innovator goes well beyond having an innovative mind. It requires a passion for making a difference a commitment to solving complex problems, and a deep understanding of the needs and aspirations of those they want to serve. And I think it also takes a lot of persistence and tenacity and the ability to overcome lots of little failures. In short, innovators are dreamers who decided to do something. And more, moreover, innovators strive within a collaborative ecosystem. I know I do. I, I, I thrive being around others. See, they understand the power of diverse perspectives, fostering an environment where ideas are shared, nurtured, and brought to fruition through a collective effort. And isn't what all you and the GBA is all about, and by extension, Web3 and the blockchain community, is about collaboration and shared incentives. So for all the innovators out there, so for all of you, I applaud your audacity, your resilience, and your unwavering commitment to shaping a better future, especially our three nominees. So the finalist for the Innovation Award, Michael Kanovitz, the CEO of Giraffe Blockchain, and I hope I'm pronouncing everything properly, Pradeep Goel, the CEO of SolveCare, and Nimit Swani, the CEO of Votas. You know, Steve Jobs once said, I want to make a dent in the universe. And I think each and every one of you are well on your way of putting your own dent in the universe. And so the winner is, let me grab it. I don't know who it is. Michael, where are you, Michael Kanovitz? I kind of guessed that winners would have to say something uh, to the crowd, uh, but was never actually told that. So when I realized that that was going to happen, I started wishing not to win the award. Um, <laughs> but, but of course, I, I reflected. Uh, and um, it, uh, the things I want to say, 
Oh, microphone, sorry. So uh, uh, three years ago, I didn't know anything at all about blockchain. And uh, it was during COVID, and I was lucky enough to find GBA and to be able to participate in Zoom calls. And uh, even though everybody in those calls knew an awful lot more than I did, uh, I was accepted. And uh, that gave me the courage uh, to, to be able to move forward and to start doing things that um, maybe other people would think were crazy, even people inside of, uh, inside of the blockchain community. And what really enabled that is that, uh, is that Gerard and Kathy have built an organization where people are actually friends. Uh, you know, you go to a lot of conventions uh, and there's a ton of them in blockchain and people are friendly, but people here really are uh, your friend. And uh, when you're trying to change the world, you need your friends. So, thanks. Congratulations again. With the sash. Did you get your boss? Michael. Don't forget this. I was trusting you. Okay, let me give you the box. You're going to need that for the airplane. Thank you very much. Now, Kathleen Alcorn, who will be presenting the Social Impact Award. She's with Lieberland. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. And uh, as part of Lieberland, I just want to congratulate the Tobins for becoming new citizens as well. Um, yeah. So big applause there. So I'm the former deputy mayor of the city of Springfield. Uh, my boss recently lost the election, sadly, but I was able to achieve the one goal I wanted to do, which is build a huge cybersecurity initiative. So we are the first city in the country to do the work we're doing to protect our critical infrastructure. So yeah, very excited about that. But this award is very um, personal to me because I received it from Brian Talebi, who set up Ahura AI, and I don't know if you know anything about Brian Talebi, but I would look up his speech at uh, Davos for the World Economic Forum. And also with that, I have to thank Kathy Dosh because this woman is so amazing and she can adapt to any changes in any event and venue. So thank you, Kathy, for putting all this together and Gerard as well. So I'm gonna keep it short. Our winners for our finalists, are, um, ooh, Pradeep. So we have John Trask, Pradeep Goel, and Amy Westervelt. Congratulations to all of you for being finalists and making a huge effort to make a huge impact on changing the world. So to that, thank you, Gerard. Gerard was afraid I would drop it, which is <laughs> fair. <laughs> so the winner is John Trask. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you for this amazing recognition. First, I want to thank everyone who voted for us. We genuinely appreciate your support. It's a great honor to be accepting this award today, and I regret not being able to be there in person. The airlines had other plans for me. I did get to see some nice airports, though. <laughs> At Demitra, social impact is more to us than just an idea. It's one of the main goals that we work towards every day. We're on a journey to bring widespread, life-changing results to farmers around the globe. By continuously working to improve the well-being of farmers, we believe that the results will spread to their communities, societies, and even the world at large. Demitra is on a mission to support small farmers globally, fighting world hunger, reducing their environmental impact, reducing deforestation, and increasing carbon storage all while helping them increase crop goals, reducing costs, and mitigating risk. This award is an acknowledgement of what we're doing as a company and what we have in store for the future. Together with my team at Demetra, we've been building and delivering technology that's changing the world of farming. Our applications have been adopted in 17 countries and counting. The Demetra token fuels are an application providing utility for deforestation certificates, traceability, and soon an agricultural marketplace. 
Longer term, we'll be adding lending and insurance, creating opportunities for more financial inclusion. We're helping small farmers manage and report deforestation, helping them comply with global deforestation regulations. In addition, we're using artificial intelligence to help farmers make better decisions to be more effective in a world ravaged by climate change. We utilize both satellite and IoT analysis to help manage and reduce soil degradation and increase freshwater efficiency. This is helping us create an ecosystem that enables farmers to leverage their data and earn extra income. Looking to the future, our team will continue developing and adapting software that allows farmers, cooperatives, and governments to make the best decisions. We want to lead by example and showcase that through our work. Speaking of the work we're doing for social impact, I think it's equally important to acknowledge Pradeep from SolveCare and Amy from the Energy Web Foundation, their efforts towards creating an impactful and lasting social impact on the world today are invaluable and exceptionally significant. And last but not least, I want to thank GBA for facilitating this event and presenting these awards. They're playing a vital role in raising awareness of social impact and creating more opportunities to bring real and lasting impact to the world. Thank you and have a great evening. Congratulations, John Trass. Another applause, please. Now, my pleasure to introduce again Gerard Dache, who will present the Annual Achievement Award for Social Impact. Gerard. A slight correction, uh, Courage. I'm going to be doing the, the Courage Award. <clears throat> yeah, for those of you who don't know uh, much about uh, Demetria, I highly encourage you to take a look at it. It's, it's a phenomenal solution, and they've, they've just done incredible things around the world. I'm a, a, I'm a fill-in. So um, we had some other folks pl uh, planning to do this, but sometimes you just have to adapt to change, right? Uh, so courage. Let me just take a, a moment, um, and I, I want to thank Kathy for putting this, uh, this event together um, and, and giving us a few words to think about. But uh, courage is standing up to the enemy when fear tells you to run. It takes great courage to face the evils of the world. But without the actions of courageous people, all, all that we hold dear would be destroyed. I'm a big John Wayne fan. Some of you who know me uh, uh, well know that uh, I've seen every single one of his uh, 300 movies. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> when I, he was sort of my father figure growing up. And uh, he said something that I'll never forget. He said, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and there are many people, as I look here in the audience and just know, know folks in GBA, um, where it has taken great courage to do things. I think of you know, what Dino did, right? He had, to, he had to do something that nobody else had, had seen or done before at the United Nations, right? And, I, and as I look around, I, I, now I can't start naming names because uh, there's too many of you. Uh, so this was a very difficult award to, um, um, to figure out who the best was. And in, in, in last year, I think the awardee was uh, President Bukele of uh, El Salvador. Right for the courage he had to take when he essentially said that they, as a nation, they were going to accept Bitcoin. Um, this is not the be this is not the end of courage for us. I do believe that um, the battle lines are being drawn between the CBDC folks, between the the stable coins, the the libertarians who, who believe in cryptocurrency. Um, there are there's a lot at stake. There's very powerful institutions on all side of this, and what we're going to need is we're going to need courageous people that despite all of the static and the noise can look clearly into the future and with ethics, courage, and conviction move, move forward. And so I'm very honored <clears throat> to be able to present this. So the awardees are uh, Mike Benzakian. Uh, I'm sorry, not the awardees, uh, the finalists, Mike, Mike Benzakian, Pradeep Goel, and, and Janet uh, Terman. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so the winner is, uh, do we need to take a break now? <laughs> <laughs> Pradeep Goel. Pradeep couldn't be here today, so uh, William Crawford will be uh, accepting the award on behalf of Pradeep. And since um, uh, since William is not actually the award, he won't be sashing him, but uh, he'll, he'll be honorarily sashed. You got to earn it, dude. You got to earn it. Come on up and get this award.
pretty has provided a video that, that we'll see. But I just wanted to cover a couple things about Pradeep. I'm the strategic partnership manager at SolveCare. And so, ladies and gentlemen, courageous people yourself here, I stand before you representing our CEO, Pradeep Goal, a man whose ethical courage led our team at SolveCare to take a stand amidst crisis. Pradeep understood that we are not just an IT company, but they were also a catalyst for change. Not only did he not evacuate Ukraine, where a third of our employees were, he evacuated the company out of Ukraine to local area in Hungary. Then he went back. In response to the Ukrainian crisis, he transformed local buildings into warm sanctuaries for displaced families, equipping them with necessary supplies and support. This effort undertaken in collaboration with local communities and volunteers illuminates our shared humanity. The displaced Ukrainians are not refugees, but citizens in turmoil, sharing our dreams and capacities. This award today not only celebrate, celebrates Pradeep's courage, but also the bravery of the Ukrainian people and our dedicated team on the ground. It's not about charity, but it's about solidarity. Not about labels, but actual names. Not about surviving, but living with dignity. The need is vast, but we can make a difference. If you believe in unity and shared humanity, we urge you to stand with Ukraine. The Ukrainian families we aid have lost the comfort and security of home. Their sanctuaries ruthlessly obliterated or caught in the terrifying vortex of active warfare. It's more than just physical destruction. It's a devastating, it's a devastation of life as they knew it. But amidst the ashes and the ruin, we at Solve Care stand resolute. We aim to create not just shelters, but new havens, places where the echo of familiar warmth can be found, where the promise of a fresh beginning can be nurtured. Each of our care shelters is a testament to resilience and hope, a home away from home, offering much more than a roof overhead, but a renewed sense of belonging, safety, and dignity. In standing together, we prove that courage prevails over fear. Thank you. And for my, and, and for my Ukrainian colleagues, Slava Ukraina. I personally look forward to meeting each of you, and we invite you to collaborate in helping Ukraine, help you collaborate with improving the government, and also our mission of improving health care. Thank you so much. Hello to everyone in the Government Blockchain Association, our community members. And thank you, Gerard and Kathy and all the organizers for the incredible work you do. I'm speaking to all of you from Ukraine, but William from our organization is with you all and he's one of our very best. So while I cannot be with you in person, I'm certainly there with you in spirit. I want to thank you all for the recognition and the award. And I humbly accept on behalf of my whole team who are beyond courageous, beyond competent, and a true inspiration to me and many others. Working with them over the last year in very challenging circumstances in Ukraine, I'm daily reminded of this famous quote from Nelson Mandela, that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather our ability to conquer it and to focus on things that are more important. And I have witnessed how the SolveCare team has risen to the occasion better than well-funded international organizations and governments. They are the ones who overcame fear for themselves and their family members and stood at 3 a.m. on train stations welcoming terrified families who were disembarking from these trains not knowing what the future holds for them. They are the ones who set up the shelters and the schools and ensured that there was mental health and physical health care for all of them. I'm very proud of them. 
and I'm honored to be affiliated and associated with this team and to be able to call them my team. And over the year, I have seen that courage turn to defiance, defiance turn to strength, strength turn into competence, and competence turn into victory. And surely victory will be theirs because they deserve it. And their efforts continue to this day. So again, while I'm honored to accept this award, it's truly a recognition of the team that has done this incredible work and have affected so many, literally thousands of families, hundreds of thousands of meals served during time when people had no other place and no other hope. And make no mistake that nothing in Ukraine would have survived the murderous genocidal intent had it not been for America and Americans. It is only because of America's support and Americans like yourself who made it possible for Ukrainians to believe in a future better than the present. So be proud for being on the right side of history. And thank you again for your award. And God bless America and glory to Ukraine. Um, so we've been doing this, um, uh, this uh, annual achievement award now for a couple of years, and thanks to, to Robert Levin, who uh, we were standing on a city street. When GBA was, was a little bit more than a meetup, um, Robert was, uh, I don't know, nice enough. You know, we had a couple of people that believed us very early on. Bryant Nielsen, if it hadn't been for Bryant Nielsen and his support, GBA would not exist. <clears throat> Robert Levin, a number of you folks that have been instrumental in the survival and and growing and building a GBA. Alex uh, back there in the back, who is who is brilliant and just an incredibly great guy. Um, so we've been doing these achievement awards, and uh, a couple of times people would ask, uh, "Can I nominate my team?" And we said, "No, it's an individual award." <clears throat> and uh, and finally, uh, we relented, and so we came up with an organizational award. And the criteria for an organizational award had to be something really kind of over the top. And part of the reason why. Um, we hadn't done a team award is we, there was, we couldn't really define a criteria that somebody could meet. Um, but over this last, I don't know, year or so, we got uh, working with the United Nations and we had folks in the United Nations working with us and we started to see what they were doing. And um, like uh, Paul said, governments are notorious, slow and difficult to work with and you don't see a lot of innovation in government. But uh, one organization, um, uh, did a lot of innovation, and they did, actually did blockchain in a number of different ways. And so uh, let me go ahead and make the announcement first, and then I'll tell you a little bit about them and then invite them to, to come up. <clears throat> um, the winner of the inaugural, the very first 2023 uh, organizational award, annual achievement award for organization, is the United Nations. <clears throat> so... Uh, so accepting the award for the United Nations is uh, Rosemary McLean and Dino Delaccio. Uh, they had implemented a blockchain solution for uh, what, over 80,000 uh, people in 190 countries and really just did some incredible work. Uh, Gerald, Robert, Kathy, and all of the members of the GBA, it's really an honor and a, and a privilege to stand before you today to accept this prestigious award on behalf of the United Nations Joint Staff Pension Fund. Um, I'm really very humbled and grateful to be recognized for our successful implementation of the Digital Certificate of Entitlement, which was really a groundbreaking blockchain solution that has revolutionized the pension administration system for our 80,000 retirees across 192 countries. First and foremost, I really want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the GBA for this recognition. And I think this award is really a testament to the timeless effort and, and dedication of the entire team at the UN Pension Fund, especially my colleague, Dino Delaccio. Our, you should be up on this stage. Stay up here. Our chief information officer who, who worked diligently and developed an implement and implemented this innovative solution. Um, you could imagine there were some early doubters in the beginning, and it was really up to Dino to, to persevere and prove that it could be done. So he deserves an awful lot of credit for this. 
I'm really proud. Yeah, we should really have a round of applause for you. I, I'm proud to lead a group with this group of incredible individuals who have demonstrated exceptional commitment to improve the client experience of our retirees and beneficiaries. The Digital Certificate of Entitlement is a secure, tamper-proof document that is stored on the blockchain. It contains all the information that is needed to verify a retiree's eligibility for a pension, including their name, their date of birth, and their employment history. In a nutshell, the DCE app can verify and guarantee the identity of our fund's retirees and beneficiaries, as well as their location via, via biometrics, storing key elements of the transactions on an immutable and independently auditable digital, digital ledger using blockchain technologies. With this app, retirees and beneficiaries now have the option to provide their mandatory annual proof of life in biometric format instead of having to return to the fund a paper-based certificate of entitlement form, which you can imagine was extremely difficult during COVID when mail service was disrupted all over the world. So this alternative was very timely. Um, the digital certificate of entitlement represents a significant milestone in our ongoing mission to streamline and enhance the pension administration process. By harnessing the power of biometric and blockchain technology, we've been able to eliminate delays and potential errors that were once inherent in the system. This achievement not only simplifies the administrative procedures, but it also ensures that our retirees receive their entitled benefits in a timely and accurate manner. In a world that is rapidly evolving, it is crucial that we embrace technological advances to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of governance and administration. Blockchain technology, with its inherent transparency, security, offers immense potential for transforming traditional systems. And the successful implementation of the Digital Certificate of Entitlement is a testament to the power of collaboration, innovation, and forward thinking. Last year, in fact, the DCE app won the United Nations Secretary General Award for Innovation and Sustainability. So this award is really a perfect complement, which is really bringing to light the social impact brought on by the Digital Certificate of Entitlement. In fact, as the DCE app gets implemented, we're observing the social impact that the solution is having on the social group represented by the UN retirees and beneficiaries around the world, in that it facilitates their annual obligations to secure their pension benefits. These recognitions would not have been possible without the unwavering support of the UN and our supporting network. So I really want to express my gratitude to the UN leadership for their vision and commitment to embracing emerging technologies, thus enhancing our client experience. And I'd also like to acknowledge the contributions of our member organizations and staff pension committees who provided the necessary expertise and guidance throughout the development and implementation process. And while we celebrate this milestone, it is important to remember that the digital certificate of entitlement is just the beginning. We are just getting started. Right, Dina? It represents a stepping stone towards a future where blockchain technology can revolutionize not only pension administration, but also various other sectors like finance, healthcare, supply chain management, and governance. So as we move forward, we must continue to explore and leverage the potential of blockchain technology in addressing complex challenges in a sustainable way and creating a more inclusive and efficient world. Together, we can unlock new opportunities, foster greater transparency, and build trust in the systems that govern our lives. In conclusion, I would like to express my de de deepest appreciation to the GBA once again for this recognition. This award really serves as a testament to the 
unwavering commitment of the pension fund and our partners to embrace innovation and drive positive change. We remain steadfast in our mission to improve the lives of our clients and to be at the forefront of harnessing the transformation of power of technology for the greater good. In summary, blockchain works. If a 90-year-old retiree can use it, we've proven that blockchain technology is applicable to everyone. So thank you all for your support, and let us continue to shape the sustainable use of blockchain technology together. Thank you.